Yeah, going up against the Flaming Lips here, but he does not go around fire, expecting not to sweat. And the top left-hand side, he is Wayne. His opponent in the bottom right from the Shopify Rebellion. Lost him. Okay, Harstam gonna be looking to uh, block the first hatchery at 16. So a pretty standard stuff. Only have fun from Wayne. I think that's honorable. I hate it when they just good luck. If you just good luck me, you usually get 12 pulled. Yeah. If you have fun me, I feel like that's better, right? Like more beneficent. Yeah. I um. I don't know what I prefer. I, I always type GLHF. I don't really Same. care what people type back to me. Really? Yeah. Well, actually... If there's okay. just silence, do you care? Okay. No, not really. But actually, what probably triggers me the most is if Protoss player types have fun. Because usually I'm in the mindset of how the heck do you think about to have fun in TVP, mate? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, especially after a rough ladder session, that starts to probably get to me the most. GL is whatever, but uh, have fun. Really? Just, maybe just have fun gets to me. Yeah. Like, for me, GL, like, it's just not cool because it's like, how do you, like, uh, to my mind, it's like, good luck, and then you complete it, you know, like, the auto-complete says you will need it type thing, you know? <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Don't Fair love enough. it. All right. Pretty standard stuff here. Spir or uh, Wayne took his drone early enough that he was able to, I believe, drop the 16 hatch in, in, uh, on location still. As he saturates his 18, um, 18 gas, 17 pool. And saturates just his gas with one at a time. Pretty standard stuff. The Overlord's just going to be patrolling on his third to make sure that there's not anything too cheeky like a cannon rush. And mm. Harstam's just going to be annoying with his probe. Standard stuff. Yeah, very, very, very normal stuff to begin with, right? Absolutely no twists or turns early in this game. Wayne, an aggressive player by nature. I would say a lot of the time he does look for some of those twists and turns and maybe trying to make things a bit wacky in his style. Um, he definitely did that with Showtime, and uh, that was why he was able to find success in that first match of the group, and that's uh, really led him into, I mean, just a very successful group stage in general. I mean, you go 2-0 against Showtime, you absolutely demolish Spirit to use the hero who we've seen just now is in top form as well. And then, yeah, you take it to Serra all three games, you just narrowly miss out, and I mean, like I said, just I'm really impressed. You know, if we based on this tournament alone, I would say Wayne is, like I say, an absolute favorite, but I do know that Hostum has had the better of Wayne lately otherwise, so... I guess we'll see who shows up on the day. Is it current Wayne or is it former Wayne? Yeah, find out. Is it little Wayne or big Wayne? Is it Wayne ready to be Batman? Is it Wayne getting taught by Alfred? It's difficult to say at this point really which difficult. Wayne we're going to get. Yeah. You know, all the talk about the critters and the previous maps had me actually thinking of Harston because <clears throat> if there is a critter master, like uh, what do you call someone who's like the like critter law master, if that makes sense? It like like the Hostum. people that work at uh, Bush Gardens and SeaWorld type thing that they like sure, teach the sure, animals like a, stuff. Like an okay. animal carrier, like a critter carrier. That would be hard. Or maybe like Ash Ketchup, Ash Ketchup, or uh, <laughs> uh, to bring it out. What's, what's the other guy? Gary? <laughs> sure. <laughs> if you want to go poke one stall, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but either way, these guys, Halston makes me think of th these guys because he is the master of all knowledge of critters. And if there was mm -hmm. ever a Protoss to not kill a critter, I reckon it would be Halston. Nice. Okay, well, that's good. Yeah, I think that knowledge does increase empathy in that sense, right? Like, you know mm. how they behave, then you're likely yeah, to yeah. not be afraid of them. No reason to kill them then. Yeah. How, how so much you can tell you the difference between male and female Karaks without looking at them? It's impressive. No way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, yeah. that is incredibly impressive. Yeah, it's... Uh, it, it is a skill, man. I would say. Yeah. You know, Wardy, so many times I've tried to think of our Archon name and there's just not much overlap between our names. So like Warcat sounded good, but now that we've been talking so much golf, I was thinking Caddy. Caddy? What about, Caddy? What, what about no. Catsty? Catsty, I like that, but it's I don't like it because it's my full name and mm. then just D. And that is the problem with most oh, of the Archon names that we can come up with Hardy. is we overlap on a lot of letters. Hardy. Words. <laughs> What? It's very difficult. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want that. <laughs> All right. Oracles are going to go into the third. Going to pick up three drones to start. One of the Oracles does get pretty low, but not too bad for Harsnam here. Mm -hmm. yeah, not too bad at all. We see the uh, Lings going across the map. There's quite a few units made already here by uh, Wayne. A couple of roaches and stuff. And this is to help him against this adept follow-up. So should be pretty set against this. 
Uh, Adepts find a couple of links on their own. A Ravager too can't really get on the Ravager, of course. This is not Glaives or oh. anything. It's just normal Adepts. You need the Oracles to back this up. We do eat a Corrosive Vial, though. Oh. And that's going to hurt. And that's a lot of units going down for Hostum early. Yeah, unfortunately for him, the, the, the Oracles weren't in position. And when they do arrive, two of the Oracles end up attacking a Roach, which means the Lynx get to survive a lot longer and output the full extent of their damage. So great job there from Wayne. Very unexpected to catch the attack in the middle of the map. So difficult to blame Harston for that. Wayne does kind of uh, morph a Ravager, which is easy pickings if the Oracles had enough energy to work with. But uh, yeah, a, a very strong start here from Wayne. Yep, very, very uh, decent. Love catching those units. He is uh, still equal on workers, though, and actually down on workers a bit as he builds up a bunch of extractors. So, in that regard, Hossum's in a pretty decent spot. I mean, his supply being ahead like that is actually kind of nutty, um, considering he's the one that feels like lost a yes. lot. But actually, resources lost in total is pretty favorable to Hossum. So Interesting. Yeah, he lost a lot of lings. And Where did that come from? Yeah, I feel like I, I lost, I missed some lings dying or something, but, uh, you know. Mm. <laughs> But that was a lot of links, to be fair. And yeah. also, it's the investment of, of Wayne that he had to make to, to, to make that play in the first place. So, mm -hmm. yeah, maybe we're misreading this a little bit, or at least I am in the, in the sense that that looked good for Wayne. But it was still pretty costly. And now Harstem is out on the map with Stalkers. Blink not nearly completed, so he has to be careful. Maybe just clear some creep, as he will get the revelation off. And you don't want to step any further, I think. Nope. I think you're just pretty happy just to get rid of a couple creep tumors, slow down Wayne a little bit. This can obviously aid your attacks later, but it will also slow down some of those aggressive attacks from Wayne that will come a bit further down the line too, right? So, definitely factors to keep in mind. We tail kill off another couple creep tumors, keeping that queen Ooh. energy low. And now we're going to start trading with these few stalkers, and they don't have blink yet, but they're doing okay right now. Yeah, Wayne tried to morph one of his uh, roaches into Ravagers, but that just netted him a greater loss as Harstam was paying attention and targeting the, the unit, or maybe even the shots were already flying preemptively, so... They don't get retargeted. Harstem now a little bit trailing in supply as Wayne has done a good job of, ca of catching back up as well as actually actually he's not even caught up in terms of workers. So Harstem liable to explode here if Wayne doesn't make something happen soon. Yeah, no, yeah, absolutely. As you see that Storm plus two starting up, we do have Oracles on the left hand side. It's going to watch this Roach Ravage. Obviously Harstem has to be making sure he's not too out of position or anything. This is pretty committed right now from Wayne, only 62 yeah. workers, so... Let's see what we can do. The Oracle's activate. Already going to get rid of two Ravagers. That's a massive start here. We're going to get rid of a third as well. I mean, this is just looking amazing for Harstam. He might lose a pylon, but I really struggle to see him mm. losing too much more. He's kind of backed in a corner, yes. Know. He's going to go back yeah, to the left. Yeah, there's no shield battery either. Mm. That's the problem, right? The Oracles also didn't shift click onto all of the Ravagers. So one will stay alive and do its damage. And this fourth will fall. I think that Harstam can afford that. I was even questioning the fact that Harstam was tacking himself back in there. I thought he might lose his army and the game with it. The fourth is acceptable though, as he is still on 78 workers versus 62. Doesn't necessarily know that, but this is a still a very playable position, it feels like. I definitely underestimated those few units from the other side of uh, Wayne. And again, the positioning as well, I guess. When you see a Protoss up against the Nexus, you're like, yeah, there's going to be a battery, some healing. But there was none of that prepared exactly. on that fourth base, so... Yeah, good call mm -hmm. as uh, Wayne will come forward again, and... There's an Immortal now, there's also Storm. Storm's not the oh. best against Roaches, but if it... You know, they stack up like that, and then you soften them up, it still obviously works pretty well. And I was gonna say, definitely an aggressive blink forward to get rid of a few extra units. Still feel like overall, Hossum's controlling this game. Wayne's trying to tech up. I wonder if Hossum has a bit of a time before, you know, a timing before, like, Hydra's and, you know, Hive Tech comes online. I'd imagine he's gonna have something if he can find the right moment. Yeah, I think this still pretty feels pretty good for Hearthstone. Yeah, and I completely agree with you. I mean, the Storms won't ever just one-shot the Roaches, right? So that's nice. But off of Creep, very difficult to dodge. And attacking into Storm means you're going to have to be a little bit clumped up. You're going to have to take additional damage. If you're, you know, defending against Storm on Creep, much easier. You can just disengage. You can just predict the Storm. And you can continue to kite. But on offense, much more difficult to make work. So Harstam's going to feel pretty safe here, like you said, until the Hive comes online. Wayne is transitioning into Lurkers. I think that is a great call from him, as they are going to make quick work of the Stalkers. But Harstam has continued to add Immortals as well. And they do extra damage against the Lurkers themselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, they absolutely do. As uh, Stalkers and Immortals going to pull back a little bit. few Zerglings are wanting to make a move forward. Uh, High Templar coming over the right-hand side. And just seeing again, Harstam just... Pushing this back, Wayne making the move towards Lurkers, which is obviously a big tech up to have happen. 
You know, Hostum with the initial kind of Immortal Storm, it's really good because if you can Storm Lurkers and soften them up, the Immortals clean them up pretty quickly. And with Charge Lots, that's the last piece of the puzzle. I would say he's missing to be able to fight those Lurkers at least somewhat decently. He's just getting that charge now because you want the Zealots to soak up a bit of the damage running in too. So, yeah, I actually like a lot of what hostum has got. But, you know, placed, oh, versus what Rain is going into. And again, Confidence right now is start moving on Creep. Lurkers are on the way, but they are a little ways off getting their upgrades. So they're not going to be full power for a while yet either. Yeah, for sure. I would love to. Uh, I was gonna say I would love to see Hearthstone continue to produce Immortals as he resumes that production. That I think is the key unit here, as it counters both the Lurkers and the eventual or the, the Roaches and the eventual Lurkers. As now Wayne is getting those upgrades himself. The charge can also help, like you were saying, especially if you come uh, at a flank, right? Like from multiple angles. That is one of the weaknesses of the Lurkers, and for the most part, any AOE unit. As Hearthstone will push into the middle of the map, Wayne has had pretty good creep, creep spread behind this. It's one of those things that where he feels like, where I feel like he has improved in recent history. A lot of the time he would be super committed to these attacks earlier, but now he usually has a transition to fall back to, and that is kind of the beauty of his evolution. This is a moment where the oracles are really good. Just for revelations, I wasn't even going to say necessarily to shoot at these lurkers during this, but just the fact they can revelate and just have reliable detection once that revelation is down for a set amount of time so important because you're not ever going to end up in a scenario where your observer gets sniped or anything like that i would say in general hostum did pretty well here because he also had a good time on the left at the same Incredible. time and he's got zealots in the main base too hostum is just playing a very solid first game cats an incredible first game here i mean he lost the fourth but yeah they recognized that he was uh, available to lose it kind of making a uh, stranded swarm host here is wayne and hostum is instead making a carrier that is not so much a mistake but rather the, the last step that he needs to, to potentially close out this game. He continues to find damage. The Lurkers and the first wave of them didn't find anything for Wayne. So Harstam looking extremely strong right now. Harstam almost double the resources lost that Wayne is... Uh, oh, other way around. Wayne almost double the resources lost Harstam mm -hmm. is at. Harstam trading very efficiently. Storms here already were very good. Another storm on those roaches. Oh. They keep on clubbing up. Oh my god. Obviously one oh more and it would my. all be dead. But I mean, those roaches are just hurting anyways and Harstam is just going to slowly kill everything with this carrier, apparently. So, <laughs> most efficient yeah. carrier of all time, man. <laughs> Nothing to answer it whatsoever. All of those interceptors are always going to continue to stay alive. And yeah, it's going to be a slow death for that army of Wayne. While on the other side, Harstam completely unanswered. It looks like we are witnessing the final moments of this game. Not without scares, but Harstam does push on through identifies his position is good even after losing the fourth doesn't lose his army in that process and ever since then smooth sailing for the captain he played such a solid game and this is exactly what i saw last time i casted Hossum versus wayne just super controlling very good against the initial offense wasn't afraid to you know give up a base or so or back away if he needed to and just super convincing play from there on out Wayne never made this game crazy enough to kind of get into his biggest strength, which is exactly what he did against Showtime, right? Just catching Showtime mm -hmm. unawares, muters all over the place, continually trading all the time. He had like that one first Roach push. They killed a fourth. Hostum was set up to, you know, beyond that anyway. And then Hostum just controlled the game from there right out. Didn't really make many mistakes and uh, sets, him up, sets himself up into a 1-0 lead for now. Yeah, smooth, beautiful transitions from him and... You know what's strange is Hearthstone kind of got demolished by Elaser as well in this tournament. And uh, Elaser and Wayne have kind of similar playstyles in the way that they both like to be hyper aggressive in the mid game. But Elaser with a very different army composition with uh, primarily just Banelings crashing on through. And um, yeah, I, I feel like maybe something along those lines would be a little bit of a better recipe if he had studied those games because Hearthstone didn't seem to have a strong answer against that. But it seems like uh, Wayne likes to be a little bit techier on his transitions. And it did not work out this time around. Let's see if Dragon Scales can tell a different story. Yeah, let's uh, let's have a peek to see what we are going to get on Dragon Scales map number two. Coming up, Wayne down by one. Awesome leading. Ooh. Ooh. That was a Good luck on and GG. GLHF, GG all before the countdown ended as well. With a space in between. Insane. Just perfect. That is when you no feel answer. good. <laughs> yeah, no wow. answer. I mean, it really goes to say something here from Wayne. Is he actually not going to say anything? Did he say it in the lobby? Is that what we? Is that the story we tell? No reply, Wayne. This is new nickname. No reply, Wayne. He's too in busy name changing. Left hand side. Yeah, seriously. He is for Starcom. Is it Starcom? Yeah. Start. You're good. Nice. It's Wayne. 
And we're out of there. And Vanya. And Vanya. In the bottom right, uh, Red Protoss. The GL, hey Jeff, GG. Awesome. From the Shopify Rebellion. He really is no reply, Wait. Wayne. Yeah. I kind of want to check. Wait, it's no reply, Wayne, I, I think. No, it's, it's, it knows. I just made it up right now. It, oh, okay, okay, okay. So it is now. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's a thing yeah. now. Yeah. No so, reply, okay. Wayne. I did see Twitch chat suggest an, a caster archon name for us Cardi. Cardi? Cardi. Cardi. I like that, yeah. That's that's kind of We both could of us even be Cardi Z. Cardi Z. Oh, yeah, man, I like that. That sounds spicy. Yeah, yeah, like a rapper type thing. Yeah. Yeah. Cardi Z, baby, in the house. <laughs> I love it. Nice. It's decided then. We, had, we, decided. we had to decide on something because Twitch chat really took up the warts one as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would be bad. Yeah. That would be really bad. Yeah, okay. Cardi and Z. Cardi so. Z, I mean, I've never heard anything like, like it for an Archon name. It's usually like a little bit uninspired, but yeah, I feel like I feel like it has a little bit more spice than most, so I like it. Yeah, I like it a lot. Has, um, no spice to this game, though. No <laughs> spice here. Oh, this, this Just game is standard again. Very, very standard. Mm -hmm. Flat. Yeah. Definitely no gold turning in this one. No gold turning whatsoever. Yeah, there is no gold either on this map. There aren't many golds in this map pool, I feel like. TLMC is coming up. So oh, there's yeah. going to be... Uh, yeah, that's exciting. You can watch that in like some new maps coming up. about 10 days' time. The first Hell's Tuesday yeah. after ESL. Mm -hmm. And I would yeah, tell you guys we have course. a lot of sick players going to play, but I didn't actually ask anyone yet. But I'm pretty sure they're all going to accept okay. anyway, so it's going to yeah, be sick. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It is going to be sick. So I am one of the judges, and of course you run the tournament, oh, yeah. so I'm going to try to ship you some cool maps this time around. Nice. I have some strategies. You know, the last uh, couple seasons of TLMC is Hearthstone Opens Twilight have been so good because they took away the restrictions of like x amount of maps have to be like weird or like have this on them right and it just meant that like mm -hmm. across the 16 maps it really felt like we had much closer to 16 absolute bangers than like oh these are the, like the eight pretty you know really good ones slash pretty good ones and the other eight mm -hmm. are kind of like yeah a little bit hit and miss you know like the last couple seasons have been yeah. great so excited to uh, hopefully have another season like that i like the season prior to this last one i feel like this last one there's a lot of sameish maps mm, yeah. like they're good maps they produce good games but uh the season but, before know, was I the like best a little season. bit of spice 100%. i think so yeah yeah, yeah. I, I so said i'm that hoping time. for something like that mm -hmm. i completely agree okay Hearts is actually not going for the oh. stargate wait three more gates no robo okay four gate glaives into disruptors question mark the fourth gate is throw me yeah because usually there it goes is. like three gate glaives into your uh, disruptors but four gates is yeah a bit different Maybe trying yeah, could to be a little bit more front. delayed. Probably, right? Feeling a little bit more aggression or something of the likes. Yeah. As the adepts are going to have to get tucked in. But this is good news for Hearthstone. If, if they can survive, can they survive? One of them certainly can, tucking itself back in. No shade to follow. So maybe not. Yeah, this adept is also going to fall. And that takes a little bit of wind out of the sails of Hearthstone, but not for no cost on the side of Wayne, who has already cut a few drones in order to make a few links, right? So... Not the worst case scenario for Hearthstone, but certainly when you're trying to go into Adepts, it, it doesn't help if uh, if a couple of them die before the attack starts, mm -hmm. before yeah. Glaives kicks in. Yeah, absolutely. Prism on the way, so this is just going to be it's gonna be one of those like little bit of a different ways of getting set up onto Glaives, right? We've seen so many variations. In the past, if you weren't warping in Adepts like 5 through 8 at like 425, you know, I've cast with Hearthstone at times where he's like, this is a disappointment of a build. But nowadays, it's... There's different ways to do it, and this time we're going to have like more adepts at a certain time instead of all the adepts at 425. So, yeah, just a uh, slight uh, variation. 420, 420 is actually the, the like the challenge that Pili Pili did once. Oh, really? You want like eight or nine adepts is what you can do at, at 420, 420 if you're perfect. That must be so all Yeah, in. but that it's so great. No, no, um, it's not so all in. I think it's more the fact that you're playing by yourself for the challenge, right? So mm. there's nothing else going on. So you can do it perfectly. Okay. Fair enough. Well, so 425 is an excellent an excellent timing provider because you have to mm -hmm. actually account for your opponent and do stuff I believe, other than just play perfect. I believe this variation just hits with more depths later though. So like right now is more mm -hmm. depths than it would have been if you tried to hit the 425 timing. So there's like slight adjustments. Yeah. Yo, these things, they want to go, man. They're going to go surround and... Oh, uh, the miles, they will connect! Wow. Yes. 
I mean, that was brilliant from Wayne. Such a difficult cha difficult uh, decision to make as well, because if it's about the links holding the Adepts, the links are not there to kill the Adepts, it's for the Vials to connect. Mm -hmm. So if, if you don't hold them for that one extra second that they did, then the Vials don't connect and you're probably dead. So nice job connecting the Vials there from Wayne. He will hold in a very unusual manner. Still traded badly. <laughs> <laughs> like the yeah. resources lost is still down he's equal on workers that's the thing with some of these holds it's like oh it's so sick he did it but it's like it's so invested from him to do it and that was kind of the issue in game one as well so kind of funky i actually really think awesome if he shaded the adepts onto the third like he was about to do at one point he would have done very well because there was like 11 lings there against pretty much like eight adepts and it would have been pretty choked up so yeah i think if he saw the ravages in the main base a moment sooner he would have let that shade finish and he would have had a few drones on top of it. And then I think Wayne would have been even even more trouble. He's going to get the surround. The Biles. Boom again. Oh, my. Perfect as well choice on the Biles on the clump of adepts that couldn't let loose. So it was mm. right in, in, on top of three of them where that was the best possible target. Everyone else was a little bit spread. So two was the best next target. And yeah, little Wayne going to find it again. <laughs> yeah, he is as we have a melee upgrade coming up here on the side of... Uh, Wayne, so that's going to be his next step of this game. Lair about to finish up. We do see a bit of Ling Ravager from Wayne making its way down to the bottom side of the map. So, journey now down to the south. A few Adept Stalkers joining together to try and see what we can get up to with that. And obviously, oh. the few Lings running in and getting a couple probes already. Okay, yeah, right. very sick. Actually, it's going to be four all day of probes that are already mining and efficiently. And again, looking for this Biles this time around, he has to let loose. And as the Disruptor shots become a threat, but still, he has enough to clear the rest of the units. Harstam will manage to save two of those, but that's not enough. With the Disruptor shots spent, the third is wide open for Wayne to continue to kill stuff. Doesn't buy the, the shield battery somewhat surprisingly to weaken the defense for later on, but still has plenty. And here in the middle of the map, or in the in between the bases rather, he can still continue to take decent trades. The Glaive Adepts will finally make work of the links, but Wayne got everything that he wanted and more. Yes, yeah, so this time it was definitely a much better fight for him. Harsom losing out on a lot. You're right, the disruptor shots kind of whiffed. He also fired them both at once, which I can understand the reasoning, but I think obviously one by one still would have been better because they both covered pretty much the same space. So a little mm -hmm. bit of a panicky defense there from Harsom. As uh, he will now start harassing with the prism and disruptors, but this is not prism speed, so you do have to be a bit careful with the prism. The last thing you want is to get that into trouble and to lose your prism and disruptors because that could just be game ending to a follow up attack as Wayne, much better work account than we've seen in the previous game, and actually catching more adepts around the map too. These ones will go down, one gets to the top corner, but one adept ain't really uh, super crazy. Yeah, Hearthstone has been excellent throughout the series. I continue to make probes, probably allocating a lot of his chrono chronobus there, as he has lost so many, it felt like, but still keeping up with Wayne just fine. I'm completely with you. Without Warp Prism um, speed, he's going to have to be a little bit careful here and just work on the outskirts instead of venturing on forward to look for those mineral lines. Still, this I, one I'm adept. I'm so sorry. I doubt this one adept, man. I literally said this one yeah. adept isn't that crazy. It's just got like six kills, seven. Wayne, please. I mean, there are disruptors going too. on, by the way, but like this adept gets in the corner, cats. Wow. Nine kill adept. Are you kidding me right now? Nine at death, nine kills on his deathbed. I haven't seen that. I haven't seen that before. The four waddling banelings are going to be pretty slow here. Blink is available, so they'll just fall. Might as well have turned around to do a little bit of damage to the shields, but that's all they were ever going to get. And now Harstam seems ready for an attack himself. Oh my no God. four shields, but he's going to find the Morphine Ravagers. That's four roaches dead. And a little bit of change from the morph that doesn't come through. So very, very strong start here from Harstam. I'm surprised that he doesn't push for more after that. Yeah, I think he doesn't have the right composition, right? He's got stalkers against what's mm. actually just massling. So You're right. I don't mind him backing away. And look at his follow-up too. Storm's about to finish, plus two's on the way. I think attacking does more harm than it does good in this uh, sense. It's very tempting after a good start. I think start, you're absolutely right, yeah. yeah. At the end of the day, it was only really four roaches, right? And it's not really the yeah, core of the army. Exactly. Point. Yeah, you're right. If you get more stalkers going, if you get your storm online, right, like the stalkers are going to provide you extra surface area and then the links lose power instead of gaining it right there. And then the uh, the the disruptor is also very unlikely to connect against just predominantly circlings. So I think you're on the money there. It's uh, it's very enticing to go after you you start the engagement that strong. But but uh, Hearthstone making the better decision and um, yeah, it's going to it's going to potentially pan out well. Again, no war some speed means not a lot of maneuverability to get pickoffs here, but the storm on the choke 
is going to be a pretty good way to start things <laughs> off. Would love to see a couple of those be morphed into Archons now to aid in the upcoming fight, as four of them have already used all of their energy. This Raptor shot aims to try to zone off the army of Wayne, but it's not even necessary so much that there's very little remaining. Harstem knows that he's going to blink on top of the Ravagers. Very expensive losses here from Wayne. And Harstem looking to stabilize strongly and take us uh, and take the series, rather. Yeah, he is pretty much in the driver's seat right now. Just going to start moving across to the other side. Stalkers and Immortal. These storms still available. We've still got at least one or two of them in that one. It's going to whiff, although it protects okay. the Stalkers from the Lings for a couple of moments. Do we have more storms right now? Yes, we do, I think. So should be good. This just UI one or two. Uh, yeah, this UI doesn't let me check uh, when I select more. So I uh, wasn't quite yeah. sure, but looks like there is. Wayne's supply just plummeted, man. It was a, a solid fight from Harstam and... But multiple times I was like, oh my god, are any Balin's going to reach those High Templar? And they just didn't. He did a great job of pulling them back. And there was even one point where High Templar order attacked actually finished off the last Balin as they approached. So, yeah, just sick all together. Yeah. I mean, StarCraft is just such a well-designed game. It's like thought through and through that if you look at the Templars, if they have two full bars, two full purple, that's a storm. If it's like, you know, one full purple and one mostly purple, you don't quite have it, but soon to have it and so on and so forth, right? So... They really thought about everything. It's just such a clean game. Like, I've, you know, I've, 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 I've ventured into a little bit of game design and stuff like that, and it really makes you appreciate uh, StarCraft for, for mm. all the thought that's been put into it. It's just so clean and so intuitive. Prison Bane, a couple of battles that will not land on anything meaningful. And do you have, again, Bane's in the mineral line. There's some trying to come in from the other side. This is what Wayne needs to do, right? Just crack down on this... Uh well, a little, a little bit of this economy. We do have the High Templars okay. quite far back. More from the Archons, he does save them. That's huge. We do have Disruptor Shots currently on cooldown, so they'll have to chill for a little bit as the Immortal goes down. Stalker's trying to oh. fight. We do lose the forward base here, Cats and Wayne. Wow. Making some progress. Now with uh, Archons joined in, we're going to blink on top of this. We dodge from the Biles for the most part. Doing a pretty good job. Did the Stalker blink and help or hurt? I'm not even really that sure. Blinks in now to get the final cleanup, and that was a wild few moments. A wild, wild, wild. I feel like Wayne had an opportunity to dis disengage as soon as he kills the fourth instead of moving forward, move back. Harstam would have still chased, but then maybe you have an opportunity to zone him off with uh, Corrosive Biles. You're always going to lose some army, but not all of it as he did. Now the Disruptor Shot's looking for those Banelings. One of them will actually get tar targeted down. I'm not even sure by what. And uh, yeah, Harstam might not be able to push here, though this Warp Prism might have something to say about it. Additional Celots are warped in. They don't seem to have charge, though. Still. Harstam looking very strong on site. Yeah, all of these reinforcements that about pop from Wayne are huge. Harstam, unfortunately, only has one Ravager to deal with, so this Prism can kind of warp in in a very precarious position if there's any more units. That's a good Ooh. disruptor shot. Even caught a Roach that just popped out. The Prism is going to take a lot of shots from the Queen, though, so now much lower HP. Has to be a bit more careful about that one Ravager. He can reposition Bile use, so he should be able to warp in again here if he wants to. The two Immortals still putting in some serious work. The Archon helping a lot against the drones. And yeah, an extra few okay. stalkers go a long way. We do lose one immortal, though. Obviously, yeah. some of this micro could have been a bit better. We killed a lot of drones in the process of all of this. <sighs> yeah, but Wind's not completely out of it. He has the real estate to work with, whereas Hearthstone has to reinvest into a fourth. So maybe if that last stalker warping would have been Celots instead, but he doesn't have charge to work with, so he was hesitant to do that. Still, Wayne you know, was reinforcing with links, whereas before he was making roaches, so kind of a gamble from Hearthstone. What is the best unit to follow up with? We'll clear an Overlord here for free, but if we look at the supply, Wayne uh, and, and the map, right? It feels like Wayne is still somehow mm. in it. No, absolutely. I mean, the killing the fourth and Hostum not reinvesting into that. Like, if his fourth was up behind this, I think Hostum's in a great spot, mm -hmm. right? Is This is a kill, yeah. not a cancel, too, so that's painful. One wow. Immortal on the other side trying to get some kind of damage done, lifted back up. Hostum on his way to a Dark Shrine, which honestly I kind of love. It's a chaotic enough game that even just initial round of DTs could do a lot here. Big Storm hits a lot of these uh, links, just softens them up big time. Ahead of this fight, Army Supply is good for Wayne. Oh. He has a lot of Ravagers especially, and there goes the base yet again. Awesome cannot hold this forward position at the moment. And, well, one more Storm, but it looks like he might be running out of units, Cats. Yeah, only one Storm remaining on, th on those Templars. They need to morph into Archons. Wayne Relentless here with the aggression. I don't think that he needs to do this right now. He just took the fourth again. This is where Harstam has been finding a lot of a lot of success is in the disengage and in the late disengages from Wayne. Again, a blink forward. Those are expensive units. If Wayne was able to just be like, oh, I got what I came for. I got a good fight. I killed the Archons. You spent most of your storm. I killed your, your base. Let me get out. But instead, he always has like like the, the urge to push. It feels like and ends up losing the very expensive backbone of his army, which is 
very strong as far as firing and as far as providing cover with the vials and as far as like killing buildings with the vial, but not very good at straight up engagements if they don't have a buffer in front. Yep, absolutely. Hossam still no fourth base, by the way. So obviously this location not being taken. He's not trying to take it anywhere else. Initially, there was creep blocking the kind of the right side forward base. So I thought that might be the thing, but you know, he's just not trying to take it at all. He feels as though he's just got to be completely all in with a counter attack. And I think it's going to be very difficult to be successfully all in at this point with this kind of an army. The splash damage is limited. He is getting DTs, and I do genuinely believe the DTs can be big because, well, there's just no Overseer right now. It's not like we can't morph one. It's just the initial chaos they could cause is absolutely huge as we're going to base trade a little bit here. Hossam will lose the fourth again and maybe even more as he does go to the top side of the map and he's going to try and work his way into this hatchery. Yeah, this is good. I mean, there's the, the immortal there too. It's going to be difficult to disengage. The DTs, though, are going to do a lot of damage here on the other side. So that's wonderful. Harstem oh. finding two big wins on two different sides, but 18 probes fall on the other side. What a chaotic game where Dicho, this is turning into a banger right now. Yeah, absolutely. Harstem just losing so oh. much economy. I think, honestly, this is going to be too much. Harstem does have the recall. I thought that might be his yeah. way out originally. But he kind of got caught up with so much else going on. The DT's still active and getting so many drones. It keeps him in the game. I think the biggest issue stands is just he doesn't have a new base to mine from. And don't get me wrong, it's not like he has a load of workers, but the bases he has are so drained. It's going to be an issue sooner rather than later that he hasn't been mm -hmm. able to get a forward base up. And yeah, that's going to really start hurting. So yeah, Hostum maybe on some of his last legs here. It feels like it maybe has been that way for a while. 18 minutes of chaos here on Dragon Scales. We have Lings and Ravagers rushing on forward in a storm. Comes in. We haven't seen storms for a little while. Is that going to be enough to help Only turn the tides here? Remaining. That's all that remains. And it's difficult to make the decision to morph those into Archons because there's he, there, a couple of them are so close to the next storm. And he probably feels like he, he needs to find value from those. So he's not gonna. But is he going to be able to hold without the Archons? That is the question right now. As uh, um, I wanted to say, Vanya Wayne has been unrelentless with this aggression this time around a little bit more buffer for those ravagers in the form of roaches also allowing for easy access for the circuits into the main as he zones off the army of harstem wonderful moves here from wayne harstem is doing what he can with dts but this game is quickly getting out of control absolutely i think harstem's traded too badly too many times 34 to 29k resources lost i mean the biggest issue for harstem said it before said again the fourth base going down and not just that, but choosing to be kind of all in following up instead of getting the fourth base set sooner. Because there was a point where he counterattacked, and if he put a fourth base behind it, he could have had some stack defense before Wayne got it again. But once he lost it that one time, he's never seen Ooh. it a second time. Now we're going to storm all over. Now I think you got to morph okay. Archon, surely, sometime soon. That was a lot of good storms, yeah, man. Sure. That was a lot of good yeah, storms. Really, really, really good storms. 45 supply for Hearthstone, but here on camera, it almost feels like he has <laughs> enough beautiful splits here. The Bailing's not connecting onto anything. However, the Roaches do clump Resume. up to find isolated Stalkers due to those beautiful splits. And Harstem still has a lot here on side. And if he can clear this base, if he can kill all the drones, maybe there is yet hope. I mean, if you throw me a, a screenshot of this game, I wouldn't think so just looking at the supply. But man, the, the screen tries to show otherwise. Links in production, eight at a time. Now 10, one Roach as well on the way. And yeah, Harstem's gonna tap out. Wow. Absolutely banger of a game, man. Just Whew. crazy. I mean, Wayne, what a setup. What a what, what resilience because he was absolutely in a whole bunch of trouble here. Um, and he just held on. He held on. He saw what he could do. And he did get forward. I mean, this game looked so good for Hostum at the 10-ish minute mark, right? When the first few storms came off, he held his fourth base the first time. It was like, wow. Yeah. And then Wayne just found something to get in deep. And Hostum just wasn't able to cope. And I mean, just I, you can't say anything, but... What a great game we just watched. I mean, that was just really solid StarCraft 2. We're going to Royal Blood. Decide it. One player goes to the playoffs and the other heads to Steadfast Do or Die Sunday. Yeah, I love that. And uh, yeah, I mean, Wayne with some beautiful unorthodox moves as well to deal with the early adept pressure, right? Like the Ravager Ling, such a difficult composition to actually make work. You need to find those piles and he found them early on. But then, like you said, Harstam stabilized too. He had opportunities to punch back. There were there was chaos everywhere. The DT did so good. He did good to kill bases. Wayne did overextend at least twice with his Ravagers, allowing Karsten more breathing room. But uh, yeah, I mean, he again, he doesn't go around fire expecting not to sweat. And, and that was a sweaty game for sure. As we now head on to the decider, Royal Blood. Yep, comes down to this. I still, you know, looking over the course of the series, I think I still prefer Harsom going into this one. 
Great comeback from Wayne, but Hostum was set up well, and if he makes the minor adjustments necessary to keep himself alive this time, it's a completely different situation, right? So, let's see what happens in the Royal Blood. I'm kind of feeling Hostum still, but Wayne showed us that he can be, again, resilient and, you know, bounce back in these games too. I think he just needs to work on that early game a bit, Cats, because he's constantly kind of getting just, like, cleanups, but he's investing so much to defend. Oh, Hostum's rattled. That is not a clean GLHF GG like we oh, saw last man. time. Top right. Shaking GL in his boots. Oh. oh, man. Hostum is in trouble. He's in the top right. And the bottom left hand side, it is no answer, Wayne. No reply, Wayne. <laughs> Becoming a thing, man. Brutal. Brutal. I mean, it does something for me when my opponent doesn't reply on the ladder, but on the tournament? Hmm. I mean, it's even more, right? It's like, it's, yeah. I mean, does, it, does he say it in the, um, in the lobby? In the lobby? I, I don't, don't know. know. I can't check on this I guy. don't know. We should have checked. He said go. I remember him saying go, go. I don't remember a GLHF. Ah, huh? okay. But that might just be uh, I mean, propaganda, you know? It might be propaganda, but I feel like even if, like, even if you don't say it in the lobby, when someone says GLHF to you, you always reply. At least that seems to be the standard for the last... 12 or so years yeah. and transcended into most other games mm -hmm. most other esports so yeah little wayne uh, who they say they gonna be little wayne it's harston <laughs> but uh is he gonna be able to do it i don't know what did you i mean for me wayne if he just reels back his aggression at key times he would have even he would have even looked stronger right yes. like again losing like six seven ravagers on the tail end of those engagements twice that is so many resources they are such expensive units and so easy to kill once they there is no buffer so again i think that yeah hearthstone can make some adjustments on defense but wayne can also make some adjustments on offense mm -hmm. so um yeah we'll see who adjusts better i guess we will see who adjusts better overlord scout to the other side couple queens few lings all on the way out our overlord coming through and just seeing our uh, cyber core nexus Everything building probe, just on a bit of a journey, cats. Everything is again very tame in the start of this game. Yeah, someone in chat was saying Karsten must have felt more behind than he was, but uh, I mean, he was a 25 supply to 80 or something towards the tail end. It's just on the screen, it didn't seem that dire, but I mean, as soon as he loses that army, he can't remake any one of those units pretty much. Could be a true statement depending on what part of the game you look at it, though, right? I mean, that's true. I yeah. think when Harsom lost his fourth, if he just rebuilt it and sat around, he would actually be kind of okay. Yeah. And like, when four more As he pushes out, yeah. yeah. And, and even if like then he doesn't attack, because like, yeah, it was bad to lose the fourth, but I think if you just rebuild some splash damage as well in that moment, that was the big issue. He didn't have any mm -hmm. splash damage on the back end of that. If you rebuild a fourth yeah. and get some splash behind like a little stalker move out and then you back away. I think he was playable, but I think he clearly fought, thought it was like, oh my goodness, I just lost my fourth, I just lost a bunch of probes, I gotta go. And so he committed heavily to the attack, and yeah, maybe at that point you could say he thought he was more behind than he was, and so he played it differently than he maybe should have done, but uh, hard to say. I mean, yeah. so much, uh, so many dynamic kind of things moving around in a game of PvZ, especially nowadays. It's uh, hard to always get the right judgment call on that. I wonder if Harstam thought he had charge, and if he had charge, if he was looking to commit mm. to basically an all-in counterattack, because he warped in Salads, they didn't have charge, then shortly thereafter on the next warp and he does disengage, right? But but maybe if he had charge, he was, he was willing to go, and that would have been more coherent with him not taking a fourth again, and maybe dies on, on that sword, right, earlier on his all-in, basically. But, uh, but yeah, if his plan was always to not attack, which it appeared to be just because he didn't commit, then definitely, definitely, I think, would have liked to have that fourth behind it. Mm, things are going to get a little oh. wrap around here, Cats, on a couple of these Adepts, so we be able to grab one of those, looking for another. And a couple drones going down on the other side, by the way. Three workers going down as the Oracle gets punched yeah. back. That's uh, pretty good, but obviously losing a couple of units over here is a bit rough. Two Adepts and a Stalker. Resources lost about it's even, all deal. said and done. Yeah, just delaying the taking yeah, of the third is big. Exactly. Yeah, it's so it's so difficult to take a third. I wouldn't have minded for Wayne to even make more links as he kills those units, just to make sure that it's costly for Harstam to take that third. The Oracle will now have to stay back, at least until its brother or sister shows up. So, yeah, I, I think, yeah, trading blows here. But, uh, but the Oracle more or less expected to do some damage, though maybe not the first one, like in conjunction with, with the second one. So, three drones, but for a few units and a delay. 
Seems like a fair-ish trade, maybe slightly favoring Wayne. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, I, I think so. Twilight Forge coming up, by the way, from Hawstom. Just double Oracle now, triple Oracle setting up and around, figuring out where they want to go to or come from. And, uh, yeah. Gonna go drop and inject over on the third hatchery as well, so... Just waiting, really, for some excitement. We've got a few deaths with these oracles, and we're actually going to see an opportunity to grab a queen. She goes for drones instead, Oof. which isn't a bad thing necessarily. I just thought maybe you kill the queen, and then the adepts show up, and they can do really well. We're actually going to shade the adepts out okay. while they move forward, looking for just one or two drone kills. Good. Cute. Yeah, we're going to find the one and the evacuation as well. So nice moves here, clean from Hearthstone. Good creep spread from Wayne onto the left-hand side as well, so... Maybe not the best angle for Hearthstone to take, but there isn't really many angles for him to take with those Adepts. Maybe look towards the fourth base instead if he spots it and try to find the, the weak spot here. Or even this forward area as Wayne is looking for a very quick fifth. Yep. Absolutely. Okay. Is our draw. This could be good. Yeah, it's going to be really good for Hearthstone. Just going to get an instant cancel. Money down the drain. Drone does not. Yeah. I was going to say for Moan, it's like, is it? Um, there is... Oh, Hossum just warped in and these Lings arrive, so this could be a bit awkward. Is warping at least on the third, which will help him protect over here. The Lings kind of run past. The Adept on the natural, though, Cats. About Whoa. a fall, and that is going to mean access. The rest of the Lings not doing no. anything. Hossum's back choose, home. Yeah. Okay, this was... Yeah, they chose no, not to go in, so a little bit of a blunder perhaps from Wayne, but does hide these two Bane Lings. However, the probe that was rallied towards the third gets stuck because he's blocked, so he goes all the way to where it spots the Banings, but I'm not sure if Hearthstone has actually spotted them. He has. Turns around with the Oracles, but that leaves the Lynx free room. So now, only chasing with one and defending with two. Hearthstone is going to be okay for the time being, but sir, your door is open, and little Wayne does not care. He's going to go into your mineral line, and that is a lot of damage, a lot of probes that are likely to be taken down here. Warpins of Stalkers, not even that great at fighting the Lynx. The Oracles will have to work on the cleanup here. Luckily for Hearthstone, Wayne doesn't have enough punch at the front to capitalize on the misposition of the Oracles at this point. But nine probes falling is pretty nice for Wayne as they both sit at 66. I was going to say, is it nice or is it necessary, Cats? Because 66 mm -hmm. works, and I feel like I've said this point every game, but the resources lost is 2.6k from Wayne and 1.2k for Hearthstone. Hearthstone has had the mm. income lead all game. Like, Hearthstone, I think, is in an amazing spot. These attacks of Wayne have just not been... Well, while that was a good thing, it was it came off of too much investment initially, right? In yeah. the end, too much damage done, and yeah, just constantly kind of feels like he's having to play from behind. Hoss, I'm going to hit Storm quickly this time again, and also charge very quickly this time, Cats. Yeah, I think you're on point on that. I think, yeah, I think Wayne is just so super hyper-aggressive that he commits so heavily that it's very difficult to judge what a, what a good and bad move is, how much damage he actually needs to make, because or to do because he is committing so hard to these attacks. So Hearthstone looking to stabilize, still Wayne with good creep spread. And uh, now transition into a relatively late Roach speed as well as Baneling speed. So maybe taking a page from Elaser's book here in in his um, in his domination over Hearthstone in the last couple of days. Gonna find also a little bit of a cancel, the Queens. Gonna be able to engage onto the Oracles. But Storm is now done. Yeah, Storm is now done. That really changes a lot of the dynamics of these upcoming fights, I would say. As uh, this next is on the top side, we'll try and rebuild Stalkers. So move Command in again after the Oracles. Oh, I'm like, how many years are going to move Command? And Wayne's going to turn back around onto this, man. Ah, I mean, that was a crazy blink from Hearthstone. Gets a three Stalkers taken down, and now the rest of the links are here. Blink should be off cooldown soon, and now the Oracle's coming to help. But that base will have to get cancelled yet again. Hearthstone blinking, but a little bit late, and one of those Stalkers will cost another one of their lives. Roach is now on this round as well, but the link count has been thinned out. The Oracle's still putting a lot of work for Hearthstone, and these Roaches are going to be forfeit. They don't even have Roach speed. Don't even try to run away. There is going to be a blink forward, and might as well have put on a little bit more real damage onto those units, because... There was just no disengaging there. Wayne is making an infestation pit. So looking for further transitions. He does have five base to work with and good creep spread. This, guy, this game is not yet done. Did also go up to 76 probes and did delay the, the fourth from Harston. So not too bad. Yep, not too bad. Harston dropping a little revelation. Keep track of this army for a little while. I mean, Bainland's coming in. Looks as though Wayne wants to keep up the aggression. No surprises there. Harston plus one air weapons and also has the high Templar count increasing. So he's got more storms than before. And again, with the revelations telling him where these Banes are coming from, that's absolutely huge. And he is going to see to be able to preemptively storm. Needs a second. Nice. Perfectly done to deal with the Baneling flank. And he is dealing with the left side Ling Roach very easily too. 
Yeah, Wayne's gonna be taking a lot of losses, but will gain in position on top of these stalkers. However, the blink is available and the shelter of the storms is beautiful. Hearthstone has been wonderful at, at going over these links against these links, knowing that he doesn't have a, a good solid backbone to deal with them. And the, ro and the stalkers will deal with the roaches swiftly. But the Bainings from behind, they could find the Templars. Hearthstone quick to morph them into Archons to protect them. And Wayne has taken so many losses. He truly is a sucker for pain here, Wardicho. It's a tough one now for him. Yes, no, it really, really is, as we just have. I mean, these are the fights that Halston's been ta able to take previously, and when you take fights like this, you end up so far ahead, and now he's got to feel it as well. All the tech from Wayne is pretty much gone. It's roaches, not even roachling cats. It's just roaches. Okay, there's some lings building, but I think Halston is right to honestly just go. Like, look, you look at this roach kind of force coming at you, and maybe you're afraid of the fact Wayne feels like he can fight, but I don't think Wayne should really feel like he can fight at all. Austin backs it up. He does have three more Zelda to open in. We'd just like to see more than anything. Maybe a few more High Templar again. Get those Storms ready once more because those have been absolutely great for him. Oh. At the same time, finds a mineral line with the Oracles. Yeah, just beautiful from Hearthstone. Good disengage as well, like you were saying. I, I don't know if he needed to push him forward. He doesn't know about the Hive, but I'm also not sure what Wayne can do with the Hive. Oh, it's going to be Adrenal for the Circlings. I mean, I guess that is the best possible choice. It is a hefty investment for that. And there are Archons and Storm that has proven great for Hearthstone against Circlings on the field. So looking pretty difficult for Wayne. Now does have those Ravagers. Those are kind of the X factor here for him. If he can land some Vials in these chokes, that will be helpful. Only a Storm, but soon to be three there available for Hearthstone. As some Banings try to wall on through and find the backline of the Minerals while the army pulls the army of Hearthstone forward. But not going to work this time around. Hearthstone good. Eyes on the ball will keep denying extra bases from wayne that one gets killed actually as a work person gets ready and set to go into the main and create more chaos yep 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 prism down the left hand side we do have ling roach ravager moving forward ready to jump onto this area in the center a few more high temple warping in a couple more stalkers warping in just seeing the single zealot of hostum out over the left side as well just keeping an eye on things here comes that prism into the main base zealots warping in going after some drones and these are the sort of things that wayne doesn't necessarily have the supply to deal with Considering everything that's gone on, that's the Ultra Cavern cancelled, has to rebuild elsewhere. And that's apparently just Wayne's plan again to Ultras. Well, if that's the plan, I, I don't know if I really love it that much. Ultras have their role in this matchup, but as kind of one of your core plans for late game, uh, I'm not feeling mm -hmm. it, Gats. Not at all. Yeah, very difficult. I mean, if they were to surprise Hearthstone, right? But now the intention that has been revealed, it's kind of easy to counter Ultras if you just go into Mortals yourself or if you abuse the time that it takes for them to build and be effective in getting their upgrades. There's going to be a massive window now that Hearthstone is going to be well aware of. And yeah, I agree with you. I mean, Ultras, you know, if you have Corruptors and you want to get rid of the Templars on the ground for the Corruptors to deal with later carriers and whatnot, then Ultras can be pretty good. But outside of that, they can be easily counterable. The Ultraless Cavern is done. But Wayne is going to have to be pretty hesitant and Armstrong to some degree by his economy to build Ultras right now before Kytna's plating is done. So still Hearthstone with an opening as he decides that maybe he's not going to be able to hit it. He starts now Immortal Production to account for them. Yep. And he's already got carriers on the way up too and there's currently no answer to carriers in the game. So that's uh, kind of a pretty big factor as well. We uh, revelate up on the few Roaches and Ravages on the right hand side. You can see a few lings and roaches heading into the top side as well, aiming for some of these, well, just gates to just, just open the door to kind of get a counterattack off. Austin is feeling pretty good about pushing. I do not hate the fact that he's there pushing either, uh, but he's just being cautious about the potential surround as well, so also don't hate that. Yeah, he invested into the carriers. He has two at a time coming out. He invested into double robo to make those immortals as well. So a lot of his investment isn't here yet. So even though, yes, if he pushes, there is a good shot that he can end the game. I feel like he is very well set up on his transition. So I, I would also be cautious if I were him. I think it is the right call. Banelings might find a little bit of the mineral line. There aren't <laughs> too many pros to be taken here. He actually uh, only had an escape with the probes because the roaches opened the pathway to the right-hand side. So, Oh, nice. Yeah, a little, little amusing, but um, yeah, I think of the grand scheme of things, not the biggest of deals. Do you see a little attack over here as well? I mean, don't get me wrong, it feels like Wayne is doing a lot, but Hostum's army is still stellar, especially with more and more carriers coming online. He's going to get rid of this base here, and Wayne is not just uh, supply blocked, he's also out of cash. So just in trouble across the board, getting stormed right now. His Rav just taking heavy hits. And I still think Hostum is absolutely in the driver's seat of the game. Yes, a little bit awkward right now. A couple bases not mining. We'll have to warp in some Zelda to try and help clean this up. But in general, I think he's uh, got this one. Looked up. Just yeah. needs to keep on playing. 
Very, very tough here for Wayne. He is getting Aspire to try to get Corruptors out, but like you said, he is not exactly a millionaire this time around. He is, in fact, broke as a joke. And uh, yeah, I mean, he is doing what he can still. This will, I mean, economically speaking, he has done a great job of resetting Hearthstone to effectively one and a half bases. Mm. So if Hearthstone doesn't kill Wayne, there's still a chance for him, but I mean, Hearthstone's army is so scary. Though only two carriers on location here. If the Biles can connect with those, that is an opening. A lot of the storm has been used. There's two or no, there's like four available still. It's going to be tough. The, the Biles were aiming for the carriers, but not connecting. The Ultra stuck in the back. It's not going to provide much shelter for the rest of the units of Wayne. And he is now dipping in supply. The army of Hearthstone seems to be too powerful. And Wayne will most likely have to tap out very soon here. Some of these vials are okay-ish, but again, just nowhere near game changing, nowhere near game winning given the situation, and obviously Hearthstone's army is not being removed from this location. It is going to stick around, clean up everything that is spawning, and it does look as though Hearthstone is going to take G? down Wayne. A single G to round us out.